What is up guys? That's not how I want to start this video. <clears throat> What's going on guys? I hope you're doing well. I'm going to try something a little bit different with today's video and, and let me give you some background on why. Now there one thing that I have found over the last year and a half that I've been doing YouTube that I think makes this channel special. Now obviously you guys know that I like to talk about kind of the philosophy and the sociology and all that kind of stuff and that's one way that makes it unique but the thing that makes the channel special is actually you guys. You may not know this but the comment count and the number of likes that my videos get compared to the relative number of views and subscribers that I have, those are really really high. I don't have a ton of subscribers, I don't have a ton of views but the number of you guys who take the time to give my videos a thumbs up and even more importantly to take the time to comment on them. It's indicative of the fact that what we're building here, what we're building here is it's a community and that's really, really cool and it's really fun to be a part of that with you guys. And as you know, one of the things that I try and do is respond to every single comment, especially if the video is like less than a month old. But as it continues to grow, as things continue to grow, I'm finding that increasingly more and more difficult. Now, what I would like to do, and I'm curious to see if you guys like this, today is totally an experiment, but today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I think was the best comment from each of May's videos, and I want to respond to it a little bit. Now, best, totally subjective, but it's guys who may have challenged what I was saying. It may be guys who were saying things that uh, went in a different direction than what I was expecting. It may just be a funny comment or whatever it may be and so what I want to do is take the time to go through some of these and respond to them and really what I would like to do is if this is something that is interesting for you guys if you feel like this is a good way to deepen the conversation and then continue to better understand the concepts and the principles that we talk about is I would like to do this as kind of like a monthly recap at the end of every month and the different videos and the different content that I put out. So let's roll with this and see what we can do, all right? Okay, so the very first video that I put up in the month of May was part one in my series on clothes that attract women. And during that first video, this comment from Politicians Exposed, I think did a good job of outlining one of the things that I neglected to mention in this video series. He said, quite interesting. Of course, not everyone can be number one in their field and get status in that way. The easiest way to obtain status would probably be to move to a poor country or to be a medium-sized fish in a tiny pond rather than a medium-sized fish in a huge pond. Now, I think that that's a great comment and it's demonstrative of the fact that I missed explaining something because while status is relative, it doesn't mean that in order for you to be able to attract a woman that you have to be the absolute tip top of the hierarchy. Now, there are societies that exist that way. You can look at like fundamentalist Mormons who they literally kick men out because the men at the top have access to and rights to more of the women. And so the men who, according to that society, are a 10, get all the women who are 10, nine dates and kind of all the way down. And so if you don't rise up to that level of status, you are legitimately expelled from that tribe. Now, obviously something like that is an extreme and we don't deal with that in normal society. But basically the higher you climb, then the more attractive the women you will have access to, at least as far as you know the, the attraction traits between 
status and, and beauty you now. And obviously there are variables beyond that, but that's kind of how it goes. And so does that mean that you have to be at the absolute top in order to attract the woman that you want to? No, not necessarily, but it does mean that the higher you go, then the more beautiful the women are who will be attracted to you, especially because like we talked about in that video, it always comes back to relative status. And so as long as your status is higher than hers, because most women want to marry up or date up or hook up up, then you're going to be attractive to her. So great comment on that one, dude. In fact, going into the next comment on part two, where we talked about how it's signaled through clothing and how it's all built up, Jonathan made this comment. He said, there's a term I learned from my time in the service that probably applies here, military crest of the hill. It means being high up on an elevated slope where you get all the advantages or height, but just below the top of the ridge so you aren't silhouetted against the sky, which makes you an easy target. When it comes to status, one should probably aim for the military crest of the hierarchy, high enough where you gain the benefits of elevated status, but not so high where people start bringing you down. One or more of Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power probably also apply, but I'm not sure which. Awesome comment, and that perfectly illustrates the point that it doesn't mean that you have to be the top dog, it doesn't mean that you have to be the lead silverback gorilla in order to be able to attract any woman. And there are a lot of benefits that come from being second or third tier that, yeah, you don't get if you're further down the chain of command, but you also don't have to deal with a lot of the same risks that come from being the absolute number one that a lot of times in competitive societies or cultures, people are trying to overturn or disrupt. And so maybe that's where you need to be is on that military crest of the hill where you have the advantages of the height, but you don't have the exposure of being at the very top. Okay, moving on to the next week. Now, the first video in the second week was probably my most clickbaity title, but it wasn't clickbait, right? It actually makes sense. And that was the video where I talked about the fact that context, the context of your environment and what you're trying to accomplish with your clothing is much more important than fit. Because if you are wearing a perfectly fitted suit while you're at the beach, it doesn't do you any good. It just like a perfectly fitted pair of swim trunks while you're in a boardroom meeting doesn't do you any good either. And so fit, will fall secondarily to context. Now in that video, Thomas Jenkins had this to say, context is important, but it's not the most important thing. Purpose is. If you choose your outfit for a purpose, that purpose can use or ignore context, depending on the strength of the purpose. And you know what? You are absolutely right, man. You got me there because context with it implies that what you're trying to do is fit in. And purpose is something that can override context because Maybe what your purpose is, is to completely stand out. You're trying to wear the suit while you're surfing or the swim trunks in the boardroom because that is what is going to accomplish your aesthetic goals. And so purpose overrides context, which is much more important than fit. Which takes us into the following video in which I admonish you guys to not default to just taking style advice from women just because they're women. So on that one, Rafael Castillo had this to say. Here's the major problem with your argument. The very same can be said about taking style advice from men. The same reasons you put forth for not taking a woman's style advice, except Ashley Weston, another female pro stylist, can be used to argue against taking a man's style advice. A man most likely will not know what women like to see a man wear, but a woman can let a man know what they find attractive as far as menswear is concerned. Now, Raphael, I understand the point you're trying to make and I appreciate it, and I wanna disagree with you on two points. Number one, I guess it's not really in a disagreement because you're right. The Every reason that I gave for not wanting to immediately default to following a woman's advice is absolutely applicable when it comes to a man's advice, whether he's just a dude who dresses well or he runs a YouTube channel and he gives style advice. It doesn't matter if it's not actually sound advice. But, but, most men don't just default and assume that anything any other man says is legitimate advice or that the journey that they start on the immediate recognition is well i want to start dressing better so i'm going to go ask my bros no of course not most men when we decide we're going to start dressing better we decide that we want to solicit more input from our wives or our girlfriends or our mothers or our friends wives who are into fashion or anything else and so there's just that immediate conflation of women who are fashionable just by virtue of being women 
therefore are better able to help us out as men dress better. And so that's the point that I was making with that. And then the second thing, Raphael, that you brought up is that men may not know what attracts a woman, but a woman will be able to tell you what attracts her. And I actually disagree with you on that. I don't think that it's easy for a woman to be able to tell us as men straight up what attracts them, especially because if you look at what women say is attractive, they'll say things like a good sense of humor or kindness or he takes me seriously or other things that are good things. But if you have loser men who perform those same things that does not take them from being losers into being attractive, those things are only attraction magnifiers for men who are already attractive to these women. You can take somebody like Zac Efron? I don't know, Baywatch just came out. You can take somebody like Zac Efron who is already attractive because of his build and his status and his social proof and his charisma and then you give him a good sense of humor and you make him kind and respectful and all of a sudden he becomes more attractive whereas somebody who's a loser and he's at the bottom of the social totem pole it doesn't matter how funny he is, it doesn't matter how kind he is, it doesn't matter how good he is to a woman, that's not going to make him more attractive. All right, moving on to the final stretch. The next video is style and mindset. Here's what Conrad had to say. I don't wanna be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. That being said, I believe that while some people have the inborn ability to be leaders and others learn it later on in life, if we were all leaders and makers, there would be no one to lead. Now, the rest of the comments really good and he talks about an article from Dappert in which he wants to celebrate the slobs or basically the idea that we should be able to recognize that not everybody's gonna be an entrepreneur, not everybody's gonna be a CEO, not everybody needs to be the absolute top of the totem pole and that's a good thing and you know what? I absolutely agree with you, Conrad. I think one of the biggest problems of our current society is that we have lost the sense of dignity that comes with being the manager of a bank or being a plumber or being an auto mechanic. It used to be that there was dignity that came with that, that men could still have relative status, that they could still feel proud of their work, that they could still take pride in who they were and where they fit within the world, as opposed to those kinds of jobs or those kinds of environments or living in those neighborhoods or interacting with those people somehow became shameful. And I don't think that there is any shame in working for a company and being loyal to a company or working in a blue collar industry. I do not believe that the only way to be masculine or to be dignified as a masculine man is to be an entrepreneur or a warlord or a veteran or something else that we know is indicative of super high status that is always going to be making history and you're, you're shaping the entire world in your image. Because if you can shape your world in your image, if you can impact your own life, if you have control of your own life, if you can positively impact the life of the people who matter the most to you, regardless of whether or not that's two people or 200 people, then that is still having that mindset of, I'm in charge of my own destiny. And if you're in charge of your own destiny and that means that you want to work as an auto mechanic? Rock and freaking roll, dude. Seriously, I have so much respect for men like that as opposed to those who think that they have to start their own business in order to be fulfilled as men. Yes, if you're wired that way, act that way. But if you're not, don't force yourself into that pigeonhole either. So thank you for bringing up that comment and thank you for bringing up that point because it's so important. And you, if you are not wired to be a particular way, don't force yourself into that and think that that's the only way to be a good man or be good at being a man. Next video is style as a skill. And in it, we talked about, is there a way to dress well without having to get good at dressing well? I'm just gonna, no, I'm not gonna try this numeric guy's name. We'll just read his comment. This is what he had to say. Thanks for making this video. Since I had first learned about your three archetypes, I've always had the feeling that the rakish type is kind of the meta one, because as soon as you start dressing well, no matter the archetype, you start standing out and that's kind of a more rakish thing. And I agree completely. Whether you fit within the rugged or the refined archetype primarily, as soon as you start putting some effort into your appearance, then what you're doing is signaling in a world where appearance, we're told it doesn't or shouldn't matter, you're saying, I don't subscribe to that philosophy. I don't agree with you and I believe that my appearance does matter. And in order to be able to do that, do that confidently and do that congruently with who you are, you have to be a little bit rakish. And so yes, there is some meta-ness 
to the rakish archetype because that's the one that embraces the idea that you can dress well and you can care about your appearance in a society where it is still frowned upon for men to express overtly any desire or concern for their appearance. And then the final video for May was, your opinion doesn't matter. Here's what Bill McLaughlin had to say. Well, I think we have degrees of what and who matters. I want to be honest and straightforward with everyone, at least try as I'm not perfect. So you could say, I think everyone's opinion matters. If we flip the concept on its head, if me and someone else have different values, I don't feel I need to validate myself to them. So I guess you could say what matters to me is that it's obvious what I stand for so that I can accomplish what I want and show respect while doing so. And Bill, I love that you flipped that concept on its head because not only does that mean that other people have to earn the right for their opinion to matter, but it means that you have to prove that your opinion can matter. And I think a lot of times we all too often think that, well, just because I exist and I have an opinion, therefore it's valuable and it has merit and other people should listen and pay attention to it when what you really have to do is be able to find as best you can the objective value of that opinion and then prove its worth, demonstrate its worth to the people who matter most to you. All right guys, that's it for the videos for May. Like I said, this is totally an experiment. I wanna know what you thought of this, if this is something that you would like to see me do at the end of every month, if you feel like this is a way to continue to further the conversation and hopefully fill in some holes that existed in the videos as I made them. So leave me a comment below, let me know what you think. Now if you're interested in learning what your archetype is, I have a quiz for you that you can take right here. If you want to watch more videos, even some of the videos from this month, you can go watch those right here. And as always, it helps me grow the channel if you will subscribe, leave it a like, leave me a comment. Either way, I will talk to you guys on the next one.